Hello, Zero K fans. This is Jeff 3 with another exhibition match stream, a little earlier than usual, and also on Twitch because Hitbox is now being weird. I I don't know. Hitbox was working okay, and then now all of a sudden Hitbox decided to just not do anything properly. I don't know why. Not sure what exactly happened there, but yeah, at this point. I'm back on Twitch for the time being, and hopefully it doesn't cause any major issues for the European viewers who were having an issue in the first place. Sorry if it does, I don't know what options there are anymore. Anyway, that being said, I guess I might as well get started. It's a little bit of a wonky setup, anyway. So this match is gonna be in Iceland. It's Hokumoko versus Nyararan. Nyararan. Yeah. Hokumoko versus Nyararan. And Iceland, for those of you not familiar, fairly large map. I believe it's 16 by 16. Almost everything is 1.7. And sorry, I actually forgot to make the round up feature in the widget. Sorry about that. I did fix it up so that I can just show this, and the rec reclaim won't glow. I did turn that widget off. But I forgot about the other one. So yeah, my apologies. I will have to remember to do that before the next cast. Anyway. We're... So yeah, it's a fairly large map. Fairly flat map. There is this hillier area that leads over here. And same thing on the other side. It's symmetric. Mostly though it is fairly flat. There's some raised areas over, like I said, the southeast and northwest. And a bit of height variation along the south as well. And similarly and then along the north. But for the most part, it is quite flat, so vehicles are fairly common. However, both players are going for Cloaky this time around, which is a little bit inter interesting. I expect, in both cases, they're going to try sending a couple builders up to this hill over here. That's a common thing to do, set up wind generators along here. And then, probably have another builder go along this backside while the commander goes up front. Well, let's get started and see how that actually plays out. So, like I said, both players going for Cloaky. Nyadaran going much less aggressive. Hokomoko starting out with five glaives. Right off the bat, five glaives, while Nanaran is going for two conjurers before anything else. They're being very confident that they can actually pull off the economy before their opponent harasses them. And that confidence is misplaced. Tokomoko going for an extremely aggressive opener, which is pretty much the exact counter. I mean, granted, at this level of strategy, the counters aren't that hard. But yeah, this is basically the exact counter. Just worth pointing out there. Anyway, Nyaradan is continuing to set up, setting up the workers over, actually all the way to the northwest. Not even bothering with this little corridor right here. They're just going through it, going to the northwest, and dealing with those metal extractors, while of course taking the safer southern metal extractors as well. Hokomoko, on the other hand, just now getting their first conjurer. Otherwise, they've been entirely inside their base, and those five glaives going towards the north, actually moving to intercept the conjurer. Now, it would appear that the conjurer should be able to get there in time, but it's actually kind of tight. This is a really good play from Hokomoko, going along the corridor right here, because they figure that Nyaradan is going to be building up metal extractors north of their main base. Which is true, just not exactly the way they expected it to be. However, is it going to I don't know if it's going to hit. I don't- no, it's not. The Conjurer just barely avoiding those glaives. Very close run thing, though. Just about spotted that Conjurer on the way to the really northern expansions, Nyaradan went for the right choice by not taking this corridor with the builders, by going straight up north. That was really, really wise to do. And why must it do that? Sorry, the... I don't know, the silly colors. <sighs> anyway, I do need to have this up though so you guys can see where people are, but yes, I apologize that the colors do not entirely match up with the players. Just know that if they're not yellow, they're taken. Anyway, Nyanadan's commander, however, getting heavily attacked by Glaives. It's going to go down as well. These Glaives are going to take it out, no problem. Although, no, never mind, that defender just barely saves it. If it weren't for that defender, this commander would be dead. So close to killing the commander. And the north, Nyanadan has taken more and more to the north and to the south. And at this point, Nyanadan has actually successfully defended. Their commander didn't die, nothing was destroyed, they got a bunch of reclaim off this. Their commander's going to heal up, I think... A light particle beam is the only part of their upgrade, but they can heal up with, with anything, really. So, right now, Hokomoko is working on about half the economy of Nyaradan, or at least half the metal economy. And they are setting up, they're getting some expansions over to the north, and probably will over to the south as well. 
But Nyananan's actually already taking the south. Nyananan is really expanding hard. Okamoko trying to get over to the main base. They're not going to be able to have any success. Losing two glaives for nothing. Would have been all three if they hadn't managed to pull that one back in the last second. Well, Nyananan now going for a counterattack. Three minutes into the game, but at this point they've had really no worries. I mean, honestly, the fact that they went for that opening economy was a little bit risky. And that timing on that... On this here, that was huge. The fact that their conjurer did not get intercepted by the glaives is about the only reason why this expansion even exists. And even now, Okomo is coming in while Nyanadan trying to harass, but not able to actually hit much at this point. I mean, they don't have much defense to worry about, but Hokomoko does, however, have nothing to worry about. They can get rid of at least two metal extractors for free. Conjurer starts to run away, but Nyanadan, like I said, is already expanding over to the south. And Hokomoko taking out as much as they can, but it almost doesn't matter. At this point, Yanadan is able to actually harass a bit, almost harass, almost destroy a metal extractor on their own with that one glaive. But still, the thing is, Yanadan is getting a lot of economy. Their economy is still way ahead. They're actually accessing. That's the one problem. They do need to get a caretaker, which they're getting several. But they needed one earlier. They needed one about a minute and a half earlier. There's always that plus 20 hump. I always talk about that, where, especially with newer players, you have this hump at plus 20 metal. Once you get to plus 20 metal, it's really hard to remember that you actually have to go above that with your production. <laughs> you have to get to minus 20 or minus 30, which requires either having a bunch of factories or, more commonly, caretakers, because they're cheaper. However, that was a little bit late, but then so was Hokomoko's. Hokomoko is, however, going for a caretaker before they get into a lot of excess. Their commander having been used to build up a bunch of stuff in the meantime, so that's... That's worked out okay. They've managed to spend enough money that they haven't actually accessed at all yet. Yeah, Nyanaran in a better position economically. Hokomoko has been harassing effectively, but even then... They've killed a few metal extractors here and there. But at that point they did, I think Nyanaran, definitely in the north. The north had paid for itself a couple times over, at least. The south, I think, had paid for itself before Nyanaran had lost it. There's actually, I believe, in the latest version, which this game wasn't played on, but the latest version actually has some tooltip stuff for to letting you know how long it'll take to pay off, which is kind of nice. Neat little feature that's added in there. Anyway, Nyanaran should be able to get rid of this corridor pretty much entirely. This metal extractor's dead, this metal extractor's dead, and also defending against some Homokomoko attacks being attempted as they try to build up the south as well. And yep, there it goes. That metal extractor has gone down. Another glaive going down. Nyanaran might be able to take this. This Lotus has 20 seconds. That's, that's too much. Nyanadan is going to be able to take care of this entire area. I don't think there's... No, there's no defensive cover here. There's this Glaive, and that's it. And that Glaive is not going to last too long. This Conjurer, dead. This Metal Extractor, however, is not so dead. In fact, the, the Defenders will... Oh, no, the Metal Extractor is dead. Getting in just the right position, the Defenders are not able to do any meaningful damage. Wow. Nyanadan able to get rid of pretty much all of Hokomoko's well, a large chunk of Pokemon's economy there, and still pull ahead. So Nyanadan at this point, once again, well, not quite double, but definitely one and a half times the economy of Hokomoko. A major... major jump, and apparently Hitbox is actually working again. Okay, that's bizarre, but I guess if this works okay, I'll just... I'll just continue on Twitch for the time being. Normally I am on Hitbox, and I'm still going to try to be on Hitbox, because it has some improved... It has overall improvements, I think, compared to Twitch, but... I... I don't know, for some reason it just wasn't working. At least temporarily, and it is now, apparently. But... I'll just... I won't bother restarting the stream, I don't think. We'll see. If there's a bunch of people having problems with Twitch, actually watching it on Twitch, then I will restart the stream. I mean, after this game. This this game looks like it's starting to... I don't know how Okomo is going to be able to pull back from this. I mean, they have gone for Warriors, they have gone for the right type counter of units, and they also have sides. They have many, many sides. A couple Glaives as well, just trying to get the few weak points they can. But where are those sides? There's five of them. They shouldn't be that hard to find. Two. <laughs> Okay, that's the other three. There we go. So yeah, some of the sides have revealed themselves. Nyanadan, however, has the great screening forces of Glaives to get rid of them. So right at this point, Nyanadan can basically screen them out and we'll be able to take care of the sides without too much issue. 
So that's a large amount of money lost for Hokomoko. Now the other three sides are themselves still alive, I think. Yeah, they haven't been really affected at all. But those sides didn't have much of a chance. As well as the commander, Hokomoko's commander is going down. Nyanadan should be able to take that out. And Nyanadan, I think at this point, is going to just take the game. Taking out the commander. Hokomoko is still behind an economy. Almost, almost half the economy. I mean, they have been going for the proper type count as well. Nyanadan has basically just been building up a bunch of glaives. But the switch over to Ravens, and with no anti-air coming up from Hokomoko, looks like it's just going to be probably a factory kill or a caretaker kill, and that'll be it. I mean, there's a handful of sides being spotted, and another scythe being spotted here. So, once again, another scythe. How many sides are left? That's still quite a few. Hokomoko continuing to build many sides because they really like them, despite the fact that there's the perfect counter with all the screening glaives. But yeah, that's, that is apparently Hokomoko's strategy, is try to get in with sides, try to find the weak points, of which there are basically none, and then work from there. Unfortunately, the fact that there are no weak points means there isn't much of a there to work from, which is having some predictable results, as we can see. So Nyanadan right now is definitely ahead. By far, double the economy, almost, no, twice the, well, twice the economy, double the military, and they aren't even building any cloakies anymore. They could, too, but they're just, they're just going heavy ra ravens. I'm a bit surprised they aren't just going for a factory kill right now. In fact, I'm very surprised because the airplane plan, I mean, they should expect the Hokomoko, if they haven't gone for anti-air already, they will now. They've seen the ravens. The window is closing, I don't know, you might want to attack as sooner, uh, rather, sooner rather than later. Attack as soon as possible. Seriously, get on it. Otherwise, it will not go well for you, I'm afraid. But even then, I don't know if Nyanadan is worried about that. Nyanadan is is going for it, though. They're going for a bit of a spread attack, which will be spotted. However, because there is no mobile anti-air, it's not the biggest deal that it gets spotted. I mean, there's these defenders, which... Five defenders against nine... I don't know, no more than that. No, it's more than... Actually, it's quite a few defenders, about eight defenders. But it looks like those ravens don't really care all that much. They're harassing on the sides, getting rid of a couple defenders here, which allow the glaives... Free reign around this particular corridor, which I don't think... Yeah, they're going to just let the Glaze do that. And doesn't matter, Hokomoko realizes there's no way out of this, throws in the towel, and that is game. Okay, so the next game is going to be a game between Golda and Drone, request from Drone, and I'm going to... Okay, you know, I am going to switch them. People are having problems with Twitch. I'm going to switch back to Hitbox, so for those of you on YouTube, this makes no difference. But yeah, if anyone was watching on Twitch, sorry about that. So be back in a moment.